Howdy folks, Rob Maximum RD, and it's that time again. Um, whoa, that's a little too low, isn't it? Let me uh, adjust this for you. Oh, there we go. Always so professional. Right. Uh, anyways, yeah, that time again. If you want a little bit of a tip, if you're waiting for a package to come, you know, if you've checked the online notice and it says uh, out for delivery, and you're not sure, nine out of ten times, whenever I've seen that, that usually meant it comes at the very end of the day. But no, all you got to do if you want that package to come sooner, jump in the shower. Works every time. So, <laughs> I was in the shower, they buzzed up. I rushed downstairs and the package was sitting there waiting for me. And it's right here. Um, yeah, this one I've been teasing about for some time. This was pre-ordered what now seems like forever ago. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's been a lot of talk going around about it. And these are a couple uh, versions on this specific item. Unfortunately, during that period of waiting and all the speculation and rumors and uh, the original um, promises, well, I guess we can't say promises, but uh, the information that was put out there by Hyperkin, no, sorry, At Games, don't want to mix those two up, the original information put out there by At Games led one to believe uh, certain things about these items. And I'm thankful they arrived, but I will say during that period of waiting and waiting and waiting, hearing certain things, there's a couple things specifically, I almost canceled the pre-order. Um, I won't get into all the little details about that, but it, was, it would have been a little bit of a, an annoying involved process. So I kind of thought to myself, well, yeah, there are these issues with the items, but they are also the first of their kind, and they're based on two things that I really love, and I thought, well, I still want them. I want them, even though they're the first version. Um, if history has shown anything from At Games, it's that later reversions, uh, revisions may come out and correct those problems. Um, so, you know, wait and see, but these were the only, these are probably the only ones I'll ever get. So I decided to go ahead and get the first versions as they were available. Because I had waited that long and I just wanted to have my grubby little hands on them. So, here they are, brand new in box. Now, I'm hoping that is focusing properly. We're not having the typical issues. Yay, I can actually see the reflection in the mirror. So, I know I'm centering this correctly. Yes, it is the ColecoVision Flashback Classic Games Console by At Games. And, yeah, these are, these are brand new, off the shelf. Really cool. And... Secondly, for you Intellivision fans, there is the Intellivision Flashback by At Games. Both units in boxes, um, much smaller <laughs> than you would have found the original system, as always. Now, if any of you have collected any of these in the series of At Games products, um, you know that basically what they tend to do is style these units uh, based on the original design, but just miniaturizing it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, Flashback 2 and 2 Plus, but those were designed by a different group of people. Um, people that were involved in some of the original uh, Atari history, so on and so forth. Uh, bottom line, you could actually alter those consoles. There's traces built right on the board where you can add a cartridge slot, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, the very first Atari-based uh, flashback, 
was uh, just a Nintendo on a chip design. You can't do anything like that with it. It's actually pretty horrid, the very first Atari flashback. But the 2 and 2 Plus were amazing. Um, everyone after that, I didn't bother getting the 3, uh, 4, I think, and now 5 is coming. If it's, or is it 6 coming? I don't even, I can't even keep track now. But they're now designed by At Games, and they're based on uh, an in house uh, emulation that they've come up with. So, uh, as are these two units. So, uh, yeah. If you're into the hacking and modding and would want to add a cartridge slot to an Atari flashback, you need the 2 or 2 Plus. None of the others will do for you. But enough about that. Um, yeah, so with my history of flashbacks, which, you know, I like, I thought, yeah, I had to get these because I have to admit, there was a time when I would have never, never thought <laughs> there'd be a new version you know, even in flashback style of the ColecoVision for sure. And of course, uh, you know, there are tons and tons of fans of the Intellivision. So I'm going to give you a closer look at the boxes and what's inside them, more importantly. But, yeah, beforehand, let's take a good look here. And now I know today I have good lighting and everything going on. No backlighting, washing away everything. So here we go. There's the Intellivision flashback. It says 60 built-in games. Collector's edition. Yeah, sure. Well, what else is it going to say? Limited, ed limited edition overlays inside. Now that's a real bonus. Now these pretty much list for, I believe it was like 49 a piece. Um, was it 49 or 34? I think it was 49. Anyways. But, um, yeah, I had to order them from the States uh, online, uh, Toys R Us. And again, that was a pre-order many, many, many months ago. Now, the, the problem with flashbacks in Canada, <laughs> here in good old Canada, is they are very scarce here. They may be in the bigger cities, like, you know, Toronto, where I used to live over 12 years ago. But here in this small Canadian city of Kelowna, I don't see items like this. Excuse me. Most things I have to order online, eBay, online retailers, etc. <clears throat> so I saw the pre-order for these units, Toys R Us. The boxing and packaging seem to change uh, several times during the initial... Um, design of the packaging, but uh, yeah, I knew my only chance of getting a hold of them for sure, uh, at least anywhere uh, near to the time of release, would be to pre-order them, and Toys R Us did have an option of shipping them with the uh, iParcels service, which was something that, that you know, this is my first time using, but as you can see, they seem to be uh, pretty good. They've arrived in what looks to be excellent condition. And, uh, yeah. So, it cost me about $35 total uh, extra to receive uh, both units. So, that's like additional shipping to Canada for both units. Uh, an additional $35. But, again, you know, it was either that or what? You know, you know somebody from the States, you hope they can pick one up for you, then they, you know, repackage and ship everything to you. Um, I just didn't want to go through the hassle. So, I just uh, uh, bit my lip and uh, <laughs> put up with the additional shipping cost and paid to have them brought directly from Toys R Us to myself here in Canada. So yeah, just showing you the uh, artwork on the box, this Intellivision one here, and all the different games that are included, including some Intellivoice games. I actually already have these games. Yeah, you can see in a past video on my Intellivision, uh, Intellivoice videos. All right, so there we go. That's uh, Let's get ready to open these up. 
and television classic game console 60 built-in games limited edition overlays which is really cool and here we go so let's open the first one here all right now as with all the flashbacks compared to the original console very very tiny so here is the instruction booklet at games okay this is the here is the actual console seems to be in pretty good shape <laughs> and so tiny I mean yeah I have big hands but this is this is crazy small let's see there's the uh, AV cables just to show you uh, try to give you a little bit more of a comparison quite quite small compared to the original console so this was the original console I'd be like <laughs> out to there so uh, very small, very light. I've actually seen somebody uh, opened one of these suckers up and the uh, ColecoVision unit up. And <laughs> there's like, you know, like a printed uh, circuit board in there with a couple chips on it. That's like less than, I'd say, probably less than half the size of this actual case. So very thin, very light, but very representative of the original in television console. Nice. Uh, wood grain, the gold, the brown. That's 70s, baby. <laughs> so here we go. Take a look here. Uh, in television classic game console manufacturer Shenzhen Electronic. Uh, that would be at games. I'm taking it. Um, China. And your usual device complies. Blah, blah, blah. That's your AV out right there. And yeah, I feel like a giant uh, holding the original. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's really, it's nice. I like the styling. I, I have to give it that. It's really cool. It includes the Running Man, the logo, and television. With just a simple... Now, it, it's printed here to look like venting, uh, <laughs> uh, little venting holes, but uh, it's just molded plastic. There's nothing. It doesn't go through or anything like that. Um, not needed, of course, for this little unit. But there's your reset button, power button, a red uh, lead right there. Um, and, of course, your two ports for the controllers. <laughs> yeah, I cannot stress how, how light this is. It's very, very light. So there's the unit. And just as importantly, our look at that that's a replication of well at least in look of the original controllers i would say it feels more like a softer plastic but otherwise not bad like i do like the the look and feel i myself only have uh an intellivision 2 of an, as far as original units go so yeah i do like the the look and styling very close to the original uh, and the buttons, I believe these are more of a soft rubber, uh, these buttons. Now, I'll, I'll say this, and this also applies with the ColecoVision, but this is one of the issues. Great looking, nice, you know, feels good uh, for anyone who's a fan of the original. But, yeah, here's the problem, one of the problems I'll tell you right now. They had originally intended these... To be direct replacements for the original controllers, meaning you could plug these into an Intellivision 2 or a Sears Video uh, Arcade unit and use them just like the original. But somewhere along the line, <laughs> I don't know if it was rushing or whatever, they just last minute plans, they changed something to get it out on time, but they wired it up in such a way that it is not compatible it is not directly compatible now for any of you people who are really into that and who would really love to use these controllers on an original Intellivision 2 or Sears Video Arcade uh, Intellivision compatible unit uh, there's uh, some fellows or at least one fellow over on Atari age manufacturing cables that are 
adapters and they cross wire things in such a way that they fix the compatibility so that you can use these on original units. Um, so take a peek over on Atari Age, do a search and you'll find this guy. He's taking pre-orders now. Uh, nobody's sending cash, I must stress this. He's simply building them right now for, for uh, made to order purposes but yeah you might want to take a look over there if that's a big deal for you i'll probably just keep these with the original unit so i'm not too worried about that uh, at least not not enough that i'm willing to pay for these uh, extra cables or adapters so yeah look into that if you're interested now i don't know if they all come like this or if this was something during shipping but here are these um replicas of the overlays limited edition overlays included now they're just kind of sitting here in the box i don't know if that's typical of all units or if they were in some kind of sleeve or something but let's just take a look so here we have uh, let's see the overlays that they were included and i believe you can actually use these overlays with your original controllers and the original titles so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's always nice to have replacement controllers, especially for uh, in television, <coughs> which are getting harder to find nowadays. Also include extra overlays with the ColecoVision, which we'll be taking a look at. But see, let's see what we have. We have Astro Smash, Buzz Bomber, another Buzz, Buzz Bombers. Oh, I hope there's another uh, Astro Smash in there. Did I miss it? No, it's just the one. Uh, Crown of Kings which I believe is another title. I can't, it doesn't come to mind now. I know it was one people were saying, I hope they include this game, but it's actually under a different name. It's under the name Crown of Kings, but I forget the original title that represents. Um, Night Stalker, now I know that's a popular one, so that's cool to have replication. Um, overlays, that was the one big thing when the price was announced, and a lot of people were saying, man, just for the new included overlays and totally compatible controllers was worth it to them just for that but of course as i said they kind of screwed up the controller <laughs> compatibility oh there's the extra astro smash so that's cool minotaur minotaur got two of those uh two space spartans awesome uh Probably got another one somewhere. Yeah, they got a little mixed up. That's oh, not surprising. Uh, baseball, World Championship Baseball. I think I see the other one. There it is, the other one. Um, oh, there's the other Space Hawk. Space Hawk, right there, so that's two. Um, Utopia, another popular game. Two of those. Oh, and two Word Fun. Woohoo, Word Fun. So there are the set of overlays that came with it. <clears throat> now there's the power adapter. This one, if any of you order a lot of uh, Chinese devices, uh, cheap consoles, <laughs> things like that, um, yeah, this will look very familiar to you, this type of adapter. Uh, but you know what, does the job, powers the unit. So that's all it needs to do. And of course there is the second controller cool so two controllers oh and see that's what i was thinking of i think yeah the overlays were obviously originally in this little binding right here but it got moved during shipment now the bo both of these boxes were a little loose in the box it came in so i'm hoping nothing got rattled too much you know outside of this but then again yeah it doesn't seems to be okay seems to be intact but uh, yeah, we'll find out later when these babies are powered on. So yeah, I did mention the controller uh, incompatibility was the one thing people complained about. Um, then, as I said, as I was hearing different things about uh, what was expected and then what was actually going to be released. Um, of course, you know, you could name 60 titles <laughs> and nobody is going to be completely happy how could they not have this how could they not have that how could they possibly release it without this or that title i know i'll be able to come up with some for the ColecoVision. i wasn't uh back in the day i briefly for like two weeks had an intellivision 2 and i think lock and chase that's it so other outside of watching commercials with george plimpton and 
<laughs> being envious. And of course, all the information I learned over the years. I don't have a lot of experience. Um, you saw a few of my own in television videos with the IntelliVoice and stuff like that years ago, and I've really not played much since then. So I actually look forward, hopefully, having some time and checking out these titles, but uh, uh, and getting that in television feel. I was an Atari guy back in the day, like many, but there's a, a huge movement for. Uh, the Intellivision, Mattel's Intellivision. Oh, I would like to make a note uh, regarding all these titles. So basically, you have uh, all these retail titles that were included, um, but I do believe, as I said, they, they changed the name on at least a couple, I think for licensing reasons, uh, apparently. Uh, if you follow any of the information, this uh, pre-release information, again, once again on Atari Age, uh, especially comments and posts by a uh, fellow great gamer and classic gaming historian, Bill LeJudis. He's he's all about the flashbacks and he, he had a little bit of uh, communication with the company. So yeah, a lot of that information is covered. I don't have all the specifics here. But anyway, still 60 games released, including the IntelliVoiced games. Uh, which And here's something cool. Uh, a selection of one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like six uh, unreleased games. So let's take a look at those being Blowout, Brickout, Deep Pockets, Hard Hat, Space Cadet, and Takeover. So that's really cool. Um, I'm not sure, I, some of these may actually just be homebrew titles that were, uh, they got the agreement to uh, include those. At least I'm hoping they got the agreement. <laughs> and uh, again, more of these kind of details can be found over on Atari Age for specifics if you're just that into it. So, oh look, ages five and up. Yep, that's me. So now, having looked at that, I'm sorry, television, you're going to have to move aside here. Step side, step back, make way, because for me, this is what it's all about. And anyone who knows me and knows as far as uh, 80s classic systems, this was my favorite, the ColecoVision. Uh, one of the reasons is because they included some great arcade ports that you really didn't see uh, on any other platform at the time for sure and some even still not today but uh, like a good example there's uh, Frenzy, Frenzy Great Game, Venture, Zaxxon, Space Panic uh, and there you got Jumpman Jr. by Epix, Epix. Um, great games, all great games but uh, let's take a look let me uh see what they say here okay my stomach just made a really weird noise I, I do need to have lunch soon but anyways so I don't see a little box out about unreleased games or anything here I'm not sure if this one includes any specific uh, games where the names have changed or uh, they're actually a homebrew title or anything like that there's nothing that uh, at least is stated uh, again, concerning more information about the game's release, there's also variations. There's some stores that apparently have exclusive game or two, or some of the games switched, or there's specific versions uh, depending on the retailer, retailer that's distributing them, etc., etc. This is something that's not new to the flashback community, so you may want to look into that information if you're really concerned about the specific titles that you'll receive with your unit. So... Enough! Let's open up the ColecoVision flashback. This was the one I was really excited about. So going back to a few of the... Oh, sure, you put a you put a, a tab on this one. Where did I put my X-Acto knife? Ah, I'm not sure. Wow. Isn't that special? I have to find it. Nope. Can't do anything. There's the box. Where's that knife? You guys saw me open this, right? <laughs> ah. Defeated. Defeated. Going so smoothly, too. And all I wanted to do was that. Okay, so. Open it up. Alright. Taking a look. And once again, there's the manual. Um, fairly close to original design. Well, you know, somewhat uh, reminiscent. 
ColecoVision flashback. Same deal. Got your set power. A little red lead right there. And the AV cable coming out the back. Once again, very, very light. About the same, I think, as the Intellivision. Ah, I might pop these open and show you guys some <laughs> detailed pictures later. Not, not in this video, though. ColecoVision flashback. Same deal. Your typical rules, regulations, uh, manufacturer, etc. And your, of course, two ports. And as I said about the Intellivision controller, same thing applies here. They were supposed to... Uh, applies here. They were supposed to include... Now these do look and feel very much like the original. A uh, little lighter, obviously. Um, but uh, I'm, I'll be interested to see how these work. I don't know. Any of you who had a lot of experience with the original ColecoVision uh, pads, I think these were, would actually be a little higher, first of all. It'd be a touch higher. And But this feels... I don't know. I guess it's almost like a D-pad, but in this shape. Whereas the other ones, the original, <coughs> it was a little different. It was a little, I guess it was stiffer. This one seems to be more, again, it just, it feels like a D-pad that's been turned into a circle. So uh, I don't know how else to explain it. You'd have to try them both side by side, but uh, I'm sure it'll do the job. But again, yeah, the pinout's weird on this. And these being very specific to the flashbacks, uh, again, without an adapter, uh, also me meaning that I can't use this on an original ColecoVision or uh, Atom system. Um, and by that same token, you can't take original ColecoVision controllers and just plug them into this uh, flashback unit. So it really is a disappointing oversight, at least in my opinion, that they didn't make them directly compatible. Because, uh, you know, then I could use my Super Action controllers, Maybe I could have found some way to try the uh, roller controller <laughs> with some uh, hodgepodge of uh, hookups and cables, but that's all completely off the books now. Um, but I, you know, hey, I do like the feel of the the touchpad. To be honest, it's uh, it's more it's rubbery feeling compared to the original. The original felt like plastic. This feels more rubbery. So, um, so yeah. Oh, as you can see, this time they're intact. Um, pop those open, and these are the included overlays. Uh, sorry, I didn't demonstrate this on the uh, Intellivision, but if I remember, where can I insert this? Yeah, right in the side. So I don't know what game this is for specifically. Oh, it's Blackjack Poker. It says right on the side there. So you can insert that, and I believe, got to be careful, you know. These uh, overlays look like the, yeah, See, do you see what's happening there? There's a thin, yeah, a very thin transparent uh, cover, and it seems to be coming off as I try to insert this. So I'm not going to force that in right now. The idea being, you're supposed to be able to insert these, uh, hopefully without uh, destroying your overlay. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that for now as I'm doing all this by one hand. There's two of those. It's already not in perfect condition. Do worst demonstration ever. Um, what's this for? This that's for a uh, fort line fortune builder. Fortune builder. Got two of those overlays. Okay, and we got. Uh, well, that's interesting looking. What's that? The dam busters. Oh, okay. Let's say drop bombs gun. Propeller, rotor, whatever, all that stuff. Good, cool. Um, and lastly, war room, war room. All right, just some commands there. All right, uh, yeah, so those are the con included overlays. Not too many, but a few, and better than none, I suppose. Oh, God, if only these guys would have included completely compatible controllers. Again, just for that alone, it would have been well worth over half the cost right there but anyways as i said at games have a, has a habit of doing later revisions there's the same looking uh, power adapter where they fix little things like that little details like that i don't know if i'm going to get any more based on the click on in television depending what my situation is in the future there's my uh, other second controller 
You used to have, originally you had a silver disc here, a little silver sticker disc, but uh, these are all black and white as you can see. I think they're kind of neat looking to be honest and they're, again, very nice uh, stylish representation. Yeah, camera decided to stop there on its own for a moment. I don't know why, so sorry about that. Uh, but continuing, there's the second controller. And uh, that's it once again. Pretty much the same, the same deal. You have your units, two controllers, uh, instructions. So as you know, there's only one thing left to do. Unfortunately, that concludes the unboxing of the units. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I very, very much want to try these out. But for right now, they're going to be repackaged, put back in their boxes, and they'll be sitting for a while because, unfortunately, I am insanely busy this week. I'm talking crazy busy. We have some uh, relatives coming over for uh, Canadian Thanksgiving weekend coming up next weekend or this up-and-coming weekend. We have some relatives visiting, and that means for me getting this entire place into shape. You know how it is. You get the place in shape for a company. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing pretty much all this week and preparing for their visit, making plans, etc, etc. So, I don't know when I can get to the actual testing and showing some of you guys some of this neat stuff. Again, uh, the controller's a bit of a disappointment, but otherwise, you know, for the price, I mean, you know, pretty good 60 games included on each uh, so we'll see I've heard some disappointment while well, I've seen some demonstration videos you guys can just easily look them up type uh, flashback uh, ColecoVision and Intellivision in the meantime videos all over the place including from like Intellivision dude of course um, some disappointments with sound on the Intellivision I'm no Intellivision expert but yeah, you know, as pointed out, like, you know, in the poker, when he's shuffling the cards, they kind of screwed that sound up. And uh, apparently in some of the other games, uh, you Clego, you uh, Intellivision fans will notice, yeah, there's, there's some disappointment with uh, some of the sound quality. Uh, that was like a known thing with at game Sega handhelds also. That's they just screw that sound up. But overall, opinion seems to be... Not bad, you know, pretty cool. Just the fact that we have flashbacks based on the ColecoVision and, and in television. Um, and they do run, they do work. You can play the games. If you're not really fussy about the sound, you'll be okay. Me, it'll be better for me when I'm checking out the ColecoVision because that's the one I actually had in the past and played so many games on and played them so often I'll probably be able to, to uh, determine better than I can on the Intellivision platform. So that's it. I'll let you go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it won't be too long until I can check these babies out for you. All right, Rob Maximum RD out, and uh, catch you later.